Hey, Melissa here from Girl Gone Fishing. And as some of you may know from watching my YouTube channel, the last two days, Brian Tacey from Strictly Sail let me take the brand new Hobie Lynx out to demo on two of my fishing tournaments. So I fished it with the Buckeye Kayak Fishing Trail on Senecaville Lake, and I fished it with Cincinnati Kayak Fishing on Brookville Lake from Indiana. And it was absolutely amazing. Uh, on Brookville with all the wake boats and the, the wind and everything, the waves were crazy. And that boat was like riding up and down those waves. And I was standing up catching smallmouth. It was so great of a fishing platform, especially for me, because at the end of a long weekend where I was completely exhausted, putting that 45 pound kayak back up on my car was so easy, so effortless. So I'm totally in love with this kayak, but unfortunately I have to return it to Strictly Sail so other people can have fun and demo it too. But before I return it, I wanted to take a chance to show you guys what the kayak looked when we had all the accessories on it, um, everything hooked up for fishing. So I am going to rig it up for you right now and show you guys, and then I'm gonna break it down and return it to Strictly Sail. And uh, I apologize for the cicada noise. It's summer in Cincinnati and we're having the 17 year cicada cycle thing. So hopefully you guys can hear me over the lovely background noise of summer cicadas, but here we go. So now I'm gonna assemble the kayak and show you guys what it looks like when it's all rigged up for fishing. And uh, of course, all the accessories and the kayak are available at Strictly Sail and Kayak in Cincinnati. First thing, we're gonna start with rudder installation. All right, rudder's in. This is the cord that pulls the rudder up and down. It'll go on the chair. This is the rudder steering control knob. It'll go on the arm of the chair. All right, next up, let's put on the H crate, the Hobie crate. So Brian really set this up nicely for me. It comes standard, just sort of naked, with uh, you know lots of room inside, with all that storage space, and four rod holders built in, one at each corner. But then it's customizable so that you can install more rod holders on the sides, and you have the little H rails that hold accessories. So Brian has installed a camera mount so I can mount my GoPro. Now this is gonna sit right in this back cargo area with the bungee cord, but they're not necessary because the H crate has these clips that go into uh, uh, little bars on the kayak that hold it really nice and steady. So clip on each corner. tip that my buddy Bert told me about was tighten the back straps more than you tighten the front straps and it'll pull the crate away from the seat just a little bit. All right, got that all snugged down. It's super secure. Uh, I guess the seat is next. Okay, the seat just sets in place. The back is held on by two bungee cords and the front has the same clip system as the H crate. All right, there we go. And I gotta tell you, this seat is really comfortable. Uh, when I fish, I wanna sit a little more upright. I know a lot of people prefer to recline more, when Bert demoed the kayak after me, the first thing he did was like lower the seat back. So again, it's very comfortable, nice adjustment. Okay, what's next? The Mirage Drive. Hey, here we have the Hobie Mirage Drive with the kick up fins, which means if it goes over a rock or a tree stump or something, the fins are gonna bend up automatically so that you don't risk damaging a fin or your drive. It's really handy. So this installs by just dropping it straight down in here and it clicks into place and you're good to go. So Brian installed this rogue fishing tether for me so that if something happened, the drive wouldn't sink, which I'm a little bit accident prone, so I greatly appreciate that. And I'm going to clip it just around the bar with the carabiner. Um, that's a good time to talk about this bar, right? So 
this did not come automatically on the kayak. Ryan actually installed this for me. It holds, uh, it's, it's that same A-Trail system and he's attached a paddle holder. I believe this is the Yak Attack Roto Grip paddle holder. I have one of those on my loon, I love it. And then he installed uh, a mount for my front camera. So we'll get to that in a minute. All right, what's next? Wow, that was so much faster than the other times that I figured there was more, but that's it. That's all the stuff you need to actually make the kayak run. Oh, one more thing. I have to install the rudder control. Ta-da! So this can actually go on your left side or your right side, either one. I prefer left because I reel with my left hand and I hold the rod in my right. So I can still be holding my rod and adjust the rudder, still fishing. Well, we can't forget the cup holder. That goes on whichever arm of the chair your uh, uh, rudder control is not on using the same system, real easy. Okay, there we go, we have a kayak. Now, let's get to some of the accessories. So Brian installed a rod holder up in the front for me. Um, it's a Yak Attack, I think it's a Yak Attack rod tube maybe, or rocket tube, something like that. Um, they're really good though, it's what I use in my Old Town Loon. Um, and he installed it on the track system that is on either side of this kayak. This came in really handy when I was landing a fish and needed somewhere to put my rod just to keep it safe, you know, while I dealt with the fish. So that just clicks on there like that, nice and secure. Then also on this same track is the transducer mount for the over the side transducer. The Lynx actually has a transducer mount on the bottom, but since this is just a demo that I was borrowing and I need a over the side transducer arm for my sitting kayak, which you cannot mount a transducer on, we just went with this for this weekend because it was easier. So there's a little ball mount in the track and this just goes right over it and tightens down and holds it into place. All right. So I had a little bit of an unplanned interruption there. My GoPros decided to power down from overheating. Uh, that's something that actually happens a lot when I'm fishing and it's super annoying. So we had a little break and uh, I took them inside and cooled them off in the air conditioning and now we're back to it. I dragged everything into the shade. So the GoPro should be happy and keep running. Let me get through this. But um, unfortunately the cicadas are even louder than they were when we were filming before. So, well, like I said, summer in Cincinnati, what are you gonna do? All right, the last thing I did before my little break was uh, attach the over the side transducer arm for the fish finder. So the next thing we're gonna do is mount the fish finder screen. So Brian has this all set up for me to install on this little rail system that comes on the Hobies. Um, I'm gonna put it on the left side of the kayak because I mostly cast on the right side and I figured having the big fish finder there might be in the way. So the way this track system works is this is the bottom part and that little uh, T part, the little T screw thing goes into the track and then you screw it down tight and it locks in leaving you this part which attaches into the, into the mount thing just like that and it'll, it'll lock in like that. So like I said, this is Yak Attack. These are really cool, um, very handy. I actually would leave this in the track and then when it comes to setup, you just put it in and click it in and your fish finder is on and ready to go. So I'm gonna go over there and put it on. So here we go. I just slide the T into there, tighten it down. Fish finders installed. Very cool, very easy. So Brian suggested I gather up the extra cords and put them in the little pocket on the back of the chair here. So for batteries for the fish finder, since I've never had a fish finder, I didn't have the kind of batteries you needed to power it. So Brian set up for me this Yak Power box that has, oh my gosh, I don't even know how to open it. three Dakota lithium batteries inside, ready to power stuff. And you don't even have to get into the batteries, which is really great for someone like me who has no idea how to use like electrical stuff. 
the outside of the box has the spots for the plugs. So it's got two of the USB things so I could run like my GoPros with it and one plug that happens to fit, like just fit my fish finder. Now I put the box right there in the H crate and it worked great this weekend. Um, I'm not sure if that's where it's supposed to go, but it seems most secure and that crate has a ton of storage. So that's where I put it. I just didn't want to risk it like falling off or something. So there we go. Fish finder and battery all hooked up and attached and powered with this really cool Yak Power box. So next up would be my GoPro setup. So this is the front camera mount that Brian has provided for me for when I borrowed this Lynx and it's Yak Attack. And what I like about it is it has multiple uh, places for adjusting the angle of the camera. All right, so this is a slightly different mounting system because it's on the H rail, the Hobie rail, instead of in the track. So this is gonna go around the bar and this is gonna close with this part locked into that channel. Then you tighten that down till it's pretty snug and then click that closed. And then you have this same, same, and you end up with the same thing as it did on that H rail mount. That goes on top of there, locks into place and you have a really nice secure camera mount. Okay, so I'm gonna go put this on the rail. So just open it up, put it on, get that little red screw in the channel, tighten it up a little bit, lock it in place, put the mount on top, lock that in place, and you're ready to put the camera on and be ready to go. All right, since we're on GoPros, let's do the back GoPro. So this is the exact same mounting system that we just did on the front, except I'm doing it on the rail of the H crate. All right, I'm just gonna pop this on the rail, lock it into place, just like we did on that front one. So here we have my Yak Attack back camera mount. It's a really long pull because the camera has to be pretty high up to get that angle that shows you and everything out in front of you that you're casting to, so you get that awesome cast to catch footage. All right, this just has a, the bottom that goes onto the mount what I just mounted. So we click it on there, it's all set, ready to go. Now to plug this in, I just plug it into the Yak Power battery box. So before Brian set me up with that battery box for this weekend, I was actually powering my batteries with this Dakota Lithium power box. And this has been great. It's the same sort of setup as he has in that big power box, but on a mini version, you have your 12 volt battery inside, but it's all secure in this waterproof box that you never have to open and mess with wires. So the next thing we're gonna do is the paddle. Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, wait a minute, you said this was a pedal kayak. It has the really cool Mirage drive, but you need a paddle as a backup. Like what if something happened to the drive or what if you got somewhere too shallow or what if you wanted to take this boat on a river trip where the river was too shallow for the drive. You could totally just paddle it like a paddle kayak. So this is a nice long paddle, comes in two pieces. For someone who might be a little bit klutzy or distractible like I am, you're gonna want a paddle leash. It's a way to attach your paddle to the boat so it doesn't leave while you're not like paying a lot of attention. So the loop goes over the paddle. The two parts of the paddle click together and lock in place. And then I'm gonna, I put a carabiner on the end of it. I'm gonna put this just around the leg of the chair. The Lynx actually comes with a paddle holder. It's a bowl and a bungee and the paddle goes in here and the bungee just hooks around that ball. And so that would work perfectly fine for holding your paddle, but Brian went above and beyond as they always do at Strictly Sail and Kayak, and he put on a Yak Attack Roto Grip paddle holder. This is really cool. These spin, the paddle goes in there, it locks in place, and this will lock onto the H rail just like the camera mounts did. So.
there we go. Extra paddle security, nice and secure. Now I know I told you guys that the seat's really comfortable, but can you ever be too comfortable? So that's where the kayak cushion comes in. This is probably the most popular seat cushion company in the kayaking world right now. Um, they come in firm or soft. I got firm. It can be used as a backrest or something for your behind. I like to sit on them. Gets me up a little bit taller and it's very comfortable. So I highly recommend getting yourself a kayak cushion to make a comfortable seat even more perfect. This is one of the most important accessories, one of the best investments you can make if you're a person who goes out on the water. This is a rogue fishing, can you see that? Rogue fishing phone tether. So this goes on your phone, this clips to the boat. You can't lose your phone in the water. All right, let me show you how it works. So the phone part is stretchy and it just stretches over the corners of your phone. I have mine in a life proof, waterproof case. So it's a little bigger and bulkier and it still goes over with no problem. So there we go. One firmly held phone attached to a bungee cord, attached to a carabiner. So most people who fish on a sit on top kayak measure their fish on the floor of the kayak. Now in my sit in kayak, I can't get the measuring board inside the kayak. So it has to go across the top of the kayak, kind of across my lap. Then when I go to take a picture, I have to raise the phone way up and this is not a long enough bungee. So I attach it to a retractable tether. So clip the carabiner into the tether. Now I have a super long adjustable cord with a carabiner on the end and I'm gonna clip this to the same carabiner that I clipped the paddle leash to. This is the measuring board that we use in kayak bass fishing to put the fish on and take a picture of to determine for the judges officially how long your picture was. This one is made by Ketch, K-E-T-C-H, American company, American made product. One of the best things I like is the Ketch ID holder here. So it mounts on the board, it flips up, and you can put your ID in here uh, real easy for the picture. I sometimes fish like an online tournament and a local trail, so I have two, so I can have two IDs at once, submit the fish to two tournaments at once. And I love that they're adjustable because if there's sun glare and you can't see the ID, your fish is disqualified. So you can adjust the angle of the ID holder so that you get rid of that glare. Now, this is heavy. It's metal, it's heavy, it doesn't float, so you need the tether comes with a carabiner on the end. I'm actually gonna clip this on the opposite side from the paddle so that the floor of the kayak is more evenly distributed with the clutter. Now I know that this is not technically part of the fishing setup, but it is an absolute necessity if you're out on the water, wear your life jacket. The kayak bass fishing rules that my local trails all follow actually require it. They require you to wear it and have it properly buckled and zipped. So does the Hobie BOS rules. I believe all trails of any significance require you to have this on and properly secured. It's a simple thing to do that could be a life-saving decision. Wear your life jacket. So we're not moving the kayak anywhere, so we don't actually need wheels, but I wanted to show you guys the cart that works with the Hobie Mirage links. These bars right here go through the scupper hole that are right behind the seat. You just put it under there straight up and put the kayak down on it and you pick the nose up and just drag it. It's so cool, so effortless. And then to get them out, you just lift the nose up and kind of shake it a little bit and they'll just fall out. So the last necessity for me for fishing is my Yak Attack Flag Light Combo. It has a track mount. This is how I use it on my kayak. I mount the Yak Attack little Mighty Mount 2 mini track mount, like just drill it, like screw it into my kayak, and then that goes in there. But for this one, I'm actually just gonna put it into one of the built-in rod holders on the H crate. This is a nice flag for visibility. It has a light up here with a 360 view. Some, some bodies of water require that. Plus it's also required, even in a kayak, to have uh, some sort of white light visible uh, before the sun comes up or after the sunset, sun sets when you're kayaking. So there's my light, here's my flag. It's got a little reflector thing. Makes you much safer to be a little more visible out on the water because kayaks are amazingly hard to see because we're so low to the water. So flag light combo. 
right there in the rod holder ready to go. Well, we got through everything that you actually install on the kayak to turn it from a cool kayak into a really fantastic fishing platform with everything you need to succeed on the water while you're fishing. Uh, the only thing left to do is put on my fishing gear, like my personal fishing stuff. So let's do that. So here's the Hobie H crate. There is a smaller version. This is the bigger version. Um, I need more storage because I have a lot of stuff. Right now it has Brian's Yak Power box with the Dakota lithium batteries inside. These are the four rod holders that come with it just by the way it's built. Got my flag in that one. And then Brian installed uh, three extra rod holders for me. One of them which is I'm using to hold the Yak Attack net. So if this was my H crate, I would install more rod holders. Uh, Brian attached one, two, three extra ones, and you put them on by screwing them into these little holes here in the crate. So I would want at least one, two, three more. So uh, since I'm using some of the rod holders for other stuff, I, I'd want more options for bringing rod. So in my sitting kayak, I can only carry two small tackle boxes. In this one, I carried one, two, three, and it was awesome. Then I have my terminal tackle box, which I just put under the seat of the kayak and the, the grippy mat kind of held it in place and the seat bar kept it from sliding. And in all the rocking waves this weekend, that thing never moved, never made me feel like it was going to fall out. This is my worm bag. I have all my soft plastics that I took with me. I mean, to be honest, I bring like a ton of this stuff and I used to throw like two things the whole time. So this also just tucked under my seat, just like that. So terminal tackle box, worm bag, plenty of room under there for other stuff. So some places you go to fish actually requires you to have a whistle like attached to your life jacket. Um, I did not, I wasn't required to have it, but it's always good to have a safety whistle with you just for emergencies. So I'm actually going to put this in the back of the seat along with the extra cord storage from the fish finder. Also in my seat back, sunscreen is a necessity for me. This is the one I prefer. That's also going to go back there. You start the morning at, you know, 5 a.m. You got to have your headlamp. Once the sun comes up, you don't want your headlamp. Where do you put it? I tucked that back here too. So as you can see, I have added the rods to the rod holders. And with this current setup, I can carry five rods. And the H crate has an easy capacity of expanding for three more rods. So it's really amazing. I didn't know at first where the rods would go on this boat because I'd never seen, you know, I'd never had an H crate before, but it's really great. So there you have it. This was the setup I used for this weekend for the two tournaments. Everything went really smoothly. It had everything I needed for the tournaments. I really can't think of anything else that I would do to make it more perfect. It was a fantastic fishing platform. I was in really big waves and I kept saying I felt like I was like in the rodeo riding a bull, but I was standing up making casts in places I couldn't have done in my regular sit-in, um, pedaling into the wind, holding myself in place. Uh, when I was drifting down the shoreline, I was standing up, riding out the waves with no problem. The stability was fantastic. The best part was hooking into these smallmouth and reeling them in, standing up. It was so much fun. So I do have a couple videos coming from this weekend, the Buckeye Kayak Fishing Trail Tournament on Senecaville Lake and the Cincinnati Kayak Fishing Tournament on Brookville Lake. Those will both be up on my Girl Gone Fishing channel soon. So stay tuned to look for those to see how the Hobie handled the bigger lakes, a little bit bigger water and bigger waves. It got crazy out there with all the pleasure boaters. And I'm telling you, this kayak was rock solid. It was such a dream to be on. It breaks my heart to give it back, but I have to let someone else play on it. This, this is the Strictly Sail and Kayak demo. Other people need to demo it and see how great it is. So I think that about covers everything. If you guys have any questions or comments, go ahead and post in the comment section. I'll either give you an answer or direct you to the right people at Strictly Sail and Kayak and Blue Ash. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks to Strictly Sail for letting me take this for the weekend. Uh, that was beyond generous. And uh, I just had a blast. I love the Hobie Lynx. Go try it for yourself. Get out on the water, be safe, enjoy the summer. And uh, I'll see you guys on the lake on the next one.
Are you ready for the high speed kayak breakdown montage? Here we go. So now I'm going to go throw it up on my car and uh, get ready to drop it back off at Strictly Sailing Kayak in the morning. <laughs> 